Okay. I just wanted to make a short video sort of explaining how that you could make a quick surface and apply some kind of patterns to that. And this is going to include some Python scripting. Now, I'm not amazing at this, but I used it as much as I could to sort of demonstrate. Um, so what I've started out with is three curves. And we're going to make a surface from this, but not a normal kind of surface. We're going to create an arc from these lines. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take each one of these lines tell the Python script to divide points along each one of these lines and then draw that arc curve through each of the points. It sounds complicated, but it's actually not too bad, especially when you see it run through the script. And I have it in Grasshopper here. Um, I'm going to run the actual script part first just because it d displays things a little bit easier. And you'll see. So all the script is really saying, it's pretty short, all it's really saying is that like I just said, it's going to take each one of these curves, divide them, put some points along them, draw some arc curves, and make a surface from the arc curves. So let's give it a try. Run the script. It's going to ask you to pick the first, second, and third curves. And then it's drawing the points. And it skipped through the rest of it, but or it went through it very quickly. But it draws each of these curves and all the resulting geometry from that. So it's pretty cool, but the problem with this, and just using the only the, the Python script directly in Rhino, is that if you move any of these curves, the surface won't update with it. Um, so let's check out the difference in Grasshopper. Uh, so first of all, I've already set these curves. And it's the same thing. Um, the script in here is even the same, which is actually kind of convenient. And the benefit is, is that when you move any of these, the surface will update with it. And this is the other fun part about using an arc curve, is that if you start to turn on these control points and move around, the surface changes in a lot more drastic of a way than it would be if it was just a normal kind of control curve. It's obviously very drastic, but I mean, you get the point. And originally what I wanted to do was to erase some sort of objects along the surface of this, and it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it would be, so I included a kind of second option for that. But let me just go through the first one real quick. So if we were going to do uh, some arrayed objects along the surface, we probably need some structure for that, and so I've used these kind of uh, arc curve divisions to create some piping structure. And it's controlled by sliders. Fairly straightforward and simple. But you can take those same lines, set up some keyframes. I mean, it's quite a few of them. But again, it's just taking each one of those lines and dividing a set of keyframes along each one of these. So really, however many objects you want along each one of these lines is how many keyframes you set up. And then you can orient an object along all these, and you have the frames continue to run. And I just have a little tiny basic surface here. And it doesn't really matter what you make, but as soon as you orient it on there, it shows up along the rest of the surface. And it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be like a little 2D thing. Like I could make a quick sphere here, for example. And then change my set geometry to that. Actually, it looks pretty nice. I like that a little bit better. But you get the idea. Anything that you can draw in Rhino, you can array along the surface using these script and keyframes. And if we go back and move these lines again, all of the objects move with it also, which makes it a lot more fun. I mean, you can start to actually make like little tunnel pavilions and things with this. But like I said, it was fairly simple. It's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, and straightforward. So let me kind of 
move these off real quick and show a second wall option I have here. So we have our three curves, we have our script making the surface. Um, and I decided to try and make a Vor noise surface pattern. There is some 3D Vor noise. They don't operate quite how I like them to though because a 3D Vor noise will kind of make a 3D object that doesn't really array, array itself along a surface quite as cleanly as an actual Voronoi grid does. Uh, and this one's a little more complicated, so let me walk you through this. So we need to make a, a randomized set of points. And I just have this grid set at that size. And you'll have to uh, kind of draw a rectangle of how big you want this point grid to be. And I recommend you kind of make it a roughly the same size as the wall. And all I did was really orient that and then draw a Voronoi grid along the surface and then project that Voronoi grid onto the surface that we want it on. One of the things I wanted though is uh, I don't really like the blocky Voronoi, so you can add some curving or fillet options. And start to get some rounded off geometries that look more like cells than an actual kind of squared off Voronoi. And then you can project this. Uh, looks like we're projecting it in the Y direction. And this one may take a second because kind of complicated, so just give it a second, bear with me. Okay, so we managed to project it on the wall okay. Um, it's not really enough to have kind of a grid though. Uh, the difficult part is giving it three dimensions. And I let this block down here. Well, let me get this projection out of the way, actually. Or the flat side. Okay. Um, I solved this problem by uh, extruding in, in three different vectors at the same time. And you would think that you could use just an XYZ vector to do that, but let me show you the difference here. See, it extrudes our Voronoi fine. The problem is it doesn't really have a thickness. It's extruding it kind of in an X, Y, and Z direction at the same time. So really it's just extruding it in a slanted way, but it's still 2D. Whereas if you take the X, Y, and Z vectors individually and plug them in one at a time, it gives thicknesses in each direction separately, and all of a sudden you have a three-dimensional Voronoi, which is what we were aiming for. And you can go through and parametri parametrically change all these. I'm not going to do it with this because, I mean, you got a quick glimpse about how long it takes just to update the Voronoi just for one wall, but if we were to move this, it would make it quite a bit more complicated. But that was the goal, is to kind of show that Python can actually be used within Grasshopper to update instead of outside Grasshopper because if you were to move this curve, everything in the Python script that's plugged into Grasshopper will update with it. But if you wanted to update directly into Rhino from Rhino Python script, you'll have to just keep rerunning the script every time you make a change. So it's just a little bit more convenient. And again, I'm not a master at it. I apologize that it's not a little bit more complicated, but it's a nice little introduction to it. So anyways, thanks for watching.